Hello, welcome to you all. I'm uh, Robin Alders. I'm a consulting fellow with the Chatham House Global Health Program uh, and Chatham House is a partner organization with the Poultry Hub. Once again, welcome to our first panel for 2021 and to the sixth panel in our roadmap series, discussions for the future of poultry, people and planet. These fortnightly discussions address key issues for sustainable development from the perspective of nutrition security and the global poultry industry. Our aim is to contribute to the UN call that we build back better from the COVID-19 pandemic for the future we want. Before we get underway, here are just a few housekeeping notes. Today's discussion is going to last for one hour. The event is being recorded and it will be available on the One Health Poultry Hub website. A direct link will be sent to all registered attendees. Please put your questions to the panelists through the Zoom Q&A function, which you can access at the bottom of your screens. Feel free to vote for the questions that you think particularly important. And if English is not your first language, please don't worry and don't let it stop you from asking questions. I'm Australian. My British uh, colleagues tell me that my English is not great, but we do manage to understand each other. The main thing is just to try to communicate. I will put as many of your questions as possible to our panelists, but if your question is covered in a previous answer or if we run out of time, please accept my apologies. We do have an online discussion platform and you can access that from the Hub website and from your registration link. Please explore this to share your questions, your comments, your thoughts. We're going to use these online discussions to also contribute to the Roadmap, Roadmap series briefing notes. Today's discussion is on the gender dimension of poultry production. And our two wonderful panelists will discuss the role of women and men raising poultry in a changing world. First though, we'd welcome your thoughts on this topic via the first poll, which should be coming onto your screens now. The poll will disappear from your screen as soon as you vote. Okay, so now I'd ask uh, Clarissa Made, please turn on your cameras. We're about to welcome you, our wonderful panelists uh, for today. So Dr. Clarice Ingabire is a livestock specialist with the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations based in Rome. And Dr. Dr. Made Setiawan is a lecturer and researcher in the Public Health Department at Udayana University, Bali in Indonesia. Each of you is going to have 10 minutes to present your thoughts and we'll give you a signal at nine minutes, letting you know that you have one minute to wrap up. So let's get on with, uh, with the panel. And so with no further ado, over to you, Clarice. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Robin, uh, for the great introduction. Uh, my name is Clarisse. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Clarisse Ngabile. Uh, I am a livestock specialist um, at the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, uh, based in Rome, uh, although I'm participating currently uh, from, from California. Um, it is a great pleasure for me and an honor to be here to, 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 to participate to this um, great discussion um, on the role of women and men in raising poultry in, in a changing world. Um, I would like to, to thank uh, the One Health Poultry Hub that is organizing this important topic, um, especially nowadays that, that, we are, uh, uh, that the world is changing with uh, the, 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 pandemic, the pandemic of COVID that is happening and, uh, and the whole discussion that is um, happening around uh, food system and the sustainability of food system. Um, next, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, um, um, pe perhaps before we go, we go further in, in the discussion, let's um, um, remind ourselves about uh, poultry in the smallholder uh, systems. Um, uh, as we, we know all that um, in, in many parts of the world, um, uh, people, our families, households are raising 
um, uh, poetry in um, according to some uh, reports and, and, and publication from FAO, um, if we look to, uh, to continent like Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa, in, in poor settings, in poor and um, in urban, in, in rural uh, households, uh, over 80, 85% are raising poultry, uh, especially chicken. Um, in poultry, we have a range of, of birds that uh, have evolved. We have indigenous and, and commercial breeds that have been um, modified based on um, some of the crossbreed uh, or the uh, genetic modification, um, genetic improvement that have happened uh, to, to lead to commercial breeds. Um, in those, um, uh, this uh, poultry uh, smallholder system have been evolving um, based on the diversity, that there is a large diversity, and this has been influenced by many factors, um, such as uh, ecological factors, uh, environmental factors. Um, uh, however, the, the choice of bird or the choice of breed uh, that the household can raise depends on many factors, including accessibility, uh, availability of the breed, uh, the local context, uh, the consumer preferences, uh, and, and many other factors that are influencing the household dynamic to, to raise a chicken. Of course, uh, we all know that poultry contribute uh, significantly to food, food security and nutrition, as we know, eggs and meat are um, contributing to uh, the availability of protein. Uh, and which is an other uh, micronutrient that are um, uh, highly uh, ne uh, necessary for the for the for the children, for the elderly, or for uh, pregnant women. And also, there is a high um, contribution of poultry to to women's self reliance and to their uh, self empowerment. Can we go to next, please? Next slide. Uh, FAO has tried and, and some other scholars uh, to classify the, the poultry, uh, the family poultry, this term of family poultry, which evolves around uh, small scale poultry, poultry production, where we have uh, from small extensive scavenging to, to small scale intensified. The difference are uh, the varies according to the breeds, uh, according to the to, to the type of um, of household, whether they own land, whether uh, those breeds they, they have small breeds. For example, in small uh, extensive scavenging, you have one to five birds that are free ranging um, in, in 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 the household that are usually kept in what they call backyard poultry or, or village poultry. And so the role of men and women are within this uh, family poultry, it varies according to the difference between uh, the production system, as we know, uh, mostly uh, the more we go towards intensified system, um, the, the role of women, the dynamics, the gender dynamics tend to shift and to change uh, depending on, on other uh, many factors that we will see uh, further. Next, please. So poultry production, is it really um, a women's domain as, as, as many uh, report, many scholars are, um, are arguing about? Um, it's true that uh, when you look at the backyard poultry production, uh, you see uh, it's day-to-day uh, -day care of the activities, animal husbandry are, um, are being taken care by women. Um, sometimes they are helped with their children or, um, and you see uh, most women participating in activities such as um, uh, helping with slaughter of the animals or building the cage. Um, in some context, um, it depends also uh, on, on which type of breed. For example, in Vietnam, you will see that uh, um, uh, women might, might have a preferences uh, for chicken and, and men uh, tend to have preferences for, for duck. Um, in some, in some contexts, for example, in Benin, uh, men tend to raise turkeys and, 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 and Guinea fowl because of the prestige that it, it, it presents itself. Um, as we see, uh, we go towards more intensified commercial system when, when um, there is a lot of economic um, aspects and economic returns. We see uh, the role of women tending to reduce um, and, and being taken over by men. 
Um, however, even in village backyard poultry, uh, women might have access depending again on regional context, depending on the intra-household dynamics and the gender relation, depending on the culture, for example, if the culture at the country context uh, uh, has a lot of, uh, has made an improvement in, in gender equality. You will see that there is equal balance uh, in uh, where women, if they are taking care of, or they have access to poultry, they are also having control on the resources or, or the incomes that are generated pro, from the sales of the birds. Uh, however, this also can, can shift depending on any activities, for example, if uh, we, we've seen some, for example, in Central America, when there is uh, the cocks are fighting, and this is a prestige, and it's linked to the main masculinity, and therefore uh, that tend to be in the hands in the hands of men. And so, the economic benefits and the access to to to, to credit and capital or land are some of the factors that can influence. Um, uh, the, the different dynamic in, in, in the poultry production system. Uh, although we know that uh, women, when they take care of the, of the poultry production, they are also having access to easy uh, cash um, income that is uh, usually used on household expenditures, that is used on, on food security for the family, that is used uh, to take really care of the family. And so, um, it's, in, it's important to understand this uh, uh, gender uh, dynamic within uh, uh, in the country context, especially when we are developing uh, development projects or when we are designing um, aspect uh, of, of, of training so that we are able to understand these factors as they influence, they can influence further. Uh, next, please. Uh, Today, there is a changing opportunity, as we have seen uh, over the, uh, the latest uh, with what we call the livestock evolution, when we see that um, uh, mostly the, the intensive system uh, that is being driven by uh, the, the demand, the high demand in animal source protein, uh, animal source food. Um, and, and this has, has, has led to an increase in intensive production. Um, which, which to some extent is in, in competition with smallholder farmers, as we know, smallholder farmers, and again, women being the majority in this uh, system, not having access to the market. And uh, also the avian influenza happening and the close of life bad market that has led again to this, um, to all the, the issues that the smallholder are facing. And so it's important that all the animal um, health programs are geared towards uh, sustaining uh, the livelihood and improving the productivity in smallholder farmers as this can really benefit women. Uh, some of the program in, 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 in training such as farmer field school have been really important in empowering women and uh, bringing the, this decision-making uh, power and, and social empowerment and confidence so that they can be able to, to manage the poultry and also pass on uh, the, the, the knowledge to the next generation. Thank you for uh, the, this opportunity. Uh, I look forward to some discussion. Thanks. Thanks so much, Clarice. That was uh, a really an excellent and inspiring presentation. I think there are, there are um, some questions coming through. I can't see um, that all of them there. I see that we've got one here from Narun, who I know is in Bangladesh. And uh, she's asking you, Clarice, what are the safeguard mechanisms that can allow equal participation in and benefits to men and women in relation to poultry activities. Uh, thank you for uh, for that this important question. Uh, it, it's important that we we we, we understand uh, this um, uh, power relations um, and and dynamics when it comes to poultry production. And and I think some of the mechanisms, if we improve. Um, animal health, which is one of the, um, the area that, for example, the 
the reduction of uh, or the prevention of Newcastle disease, for example, that is um, one of the key area that if we act on, our, on it, we are sure that we are improving the productivity of poultry system. And so in this area, we are, we are making sure that um, the, the, the productivity is in improving. And so the, the women uh, that are raising poultry that can, they can have um, easily access to income. However, in this, we need to design uh, our, our projects and, uh, and our incomes around making sure that women will benefit and making sure that women have access to credit, as we know in some countries like Bangladesh, women, when they have access to credit, they tend to invest in livestock. And so by allowing them to have access, as we know, usually to be able to, to have access to credit, you have to have access to land or to some, to some means of collateral. And so if we allow women to have the access to these inputs, uh, access to knowledge, access to, um, it's, it's equal, again, if men are participating in this system, then uh, main, we have to ensure that both men and women will have access to training, access to technologies and input so that they can equally benefit from the, the returns of this system. Thank you. Thanks so much, Clarice. Your, your talk has really generated some questions. Before we go back to those, I think the results of the first poll are in, if we could just um, display those results. And what we'll see is that uh, while the majority do seem to agree um, that uh, that gender using a gender lens is quite important when working with poultry. What we see is that almost a quarter of us either think it's not important or we're not sure. So, so we still uh, need to explore these uh, issues a little more as we go through um, this particular panel. So um, thanks very much, Clarice. And now I'd really pleased to hand over to Made and ask him to give his presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Robin. Thank you, Clarice. Uh, that was a good presentation. Um, thank you again for getting me involved in this uh, uh, discussion. Um, what I'm presenting here is based on my uh, long-term observations uh, as Balinese and uh, Balinese being raised in um, uh, to rare uh, poultry, especially chicken, um, both uh, culturally as well as uh, commercially. Culturally, you know, I was um, I was raised in a family of uh, of men who are fans of um, of of cockfighting, or so they naturally. I basically was raised around a lot of cage roosters. You know, at least in my own family, there will be. You know, my dad will have about. 10 of them and then and he tend them and then he trade them and he's always given me uh, all the uh, all kinds of uh, reasons or maybe excuses when I was a little bit older already when I was a teenager and I started questioning him why are you doing cockfighting and then he was uh, uh, giving me reasons that uh, look I have no interest um, in watching movie or surfing like you and this is my hobby, and I actually take care of my uh, uh, roosters very well, and uh, all very healthy, and um, and um, and and laid out all the detail that is uh, required to uh, to raise a good uh, roosters, as well as the intricate intricate uh, social relationship that he uh, 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 that he has with all of his cockfighting, which is beyond uh, just cockfighting. It's a lot more than that. And I'll present later in the slide. Commercially, I also got involved uh, with my family that is raised something like 8,000 to 10,000 uh, uh, poultry. And my job as, a, as, as kids with my cousins back then was feeding and also collecting, uh, collecting eggs and, 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 and and other small management that children can get involved. So later in my career in public health, I had uh, a chance to do research on the roles of uh, cockfighting uh, uh, fan in uh, distributions of HIV and STDs among uh, men when uh, uh, populations uh, are, are uh, most at risk population that, that is named, uh, namely uh, commercial sex workers, female commercial sex workers, and um, 
and drug users. Um, next uh, slide, please. So um, when I when I when I was was asked by uh, Robbins about um, you know, gender and um, and and poultry rearing, so I was looking at it from um, from what evidence that is actually in the, uh, that is exists related to uh, to to poultry in in my country in my Balinese cultures, and there are um, there are certainly some gender issue in Balinese or Indonesian. Uh, society in general that um, that even even poultry that is uh, that is so so um, so close to our life has to be uh, has to be addressed to um, to 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 the gender of men and women and 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 unfortunately all of the address to uh, to women's always demeaning to uh, 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 to the status of women in society I mean uh, to uh, to give one example, you know, like uh, what you know, why a cluck of a, a cluck of a chicken has to be to be uh, to be associated with the with the voice of women, you know, like women, it seems like that you are not worth of to to listen to. Of course, in practice, it's not that uh, it's not that. Uh, um, that's a strict in Balinese society, but you know, uh, addressing it that way uh, somehow it's uh, it's a sign of there are some uh, subtle or sometimes obvious um, uh, gender disparity here. But on the other hand, men's uh, or roosters um, crawl it, it 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 perceives to be so important because it's providing you with with the time to wake up and uh, marking the, the time for people to wake up and start the activity. Uh, but other than that, uh, there are lists of them that we can, uh, we can see, which probably also applied to other, uh, uh, other culture. Next slide, please. Culturally in, in Balinese society, uh, poultry, chicken, especially it's very important. Chicken, uh, from the start, as a Balinese, we are, um, we basically were, the first gift was uh, chicken, chicken, uh, a chick, um, a small chick, was basically presented to us as, uh, as, as a substitute for, um, for, uh, for the soul that is, uh, that is coming, uh, embodying uh, a human. So uh, if there is any, any, any bad intention from the system, from, from the surrounding that the, the, the spirit of the chicken will take care of it. Um, and, and in practice, we end up basically everybody has to take care of that chicken uh, to survive because it will provide the protection to the baby which is started in six months, uh, six months eight. And I, uh, at the end, until I was, uh, uh, until I was grow up, I, I was told that uh, the chicken that is in my, uh, in my care was, was the descendants of a chicken that was used as a substitute for my spirit when the ceremony was performed. And, and another thing that is a cockfighting, um, uh, which is very, very big in Bali, it's, um, it's, part, of a, it's part of a culture. I'm, I'm, I would like to, to try to say that I'm not oblivious uh, about the bad part of the uh, uh, of the cockfighting i'm not glorifying it over here but uh, there are some part of the, uh, uh, the cockfighting uh, as, as a culture that is actually um, 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 uh, that is um, that is so uh, so close to the community uh, uh, that actually determining the order of the society sometime you know um, when you go to a cockfighting for example it's 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 the center of it it's about trust or a friendship among men so you go to the cockfighting and you make sure that you're not betting against your your own kin if you do cockfighting outside of a village and you make sure that, for example you you have to uh to adhere with the other social norm, for example, you don't flaunt, flaunt your when when you're winning in a cock uh, in, in in a cock fighting. 
uh, to other to to the other older. And in in terms of technical and skill, I mean, the cockfighting um, roosters is is a skill to uh, to to groom. But later on, uh, when the winning, the victorious roosters are actually let free and become the main, uh, become some of the main uh, male uh, around the flock that is actually producing, uh, to be expected to produce better uh, chicks in the future. Um, but there are some, uh, of course, social uh, consequences of cockfighting in relation to health risk taking behavior and um, and also now with COVID that uh, cockfighting usually form clusters of uh, of transmission. Uh, next slide. Um, economically, um, it's very apparent that uh, that uh, it, uh, poultry rearings is very uh, contribute a lot. Traditionally. Um, traditionally, women uh, usually are a lot more meticulous in uh, in this technique, in this uh, part of it. They know that the, uh, they know um, the ability of how many chicken that they have to uh, they have to uh, rear. If it is more than thirty uh, chicken, it will basically uh, um, they tend they they will basically say that well. Uh, the, the disease probably will get it, uh, which is Newcastle disease, or the neighbors, will, because we uh, let them roaming free, the neighbors will probably get more of it. So uh, take care of just a small amount that you can actually take care of uh, uh, properly. Uh, commercially, um, it could be large. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. So in public health, uh, yes, as I mentioned before, that the cockfighting sometimes could be a hub so far, uh, of HIV and, uh, and STD uh, distributions among men who's uh, winning. And um, um, to wrap up. One minute. I think um, I will stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Made. I know that uh, 10 minutes for an anthropologist is a ridiculously short amount of time. Fortunately, the, the, the detail is written into your slides because there was some really important information there. I, I can see that uh, we have had one question coming from Bimpe, who I know is in the UK. And uh, she's asking you, why is illegal cockfighting still thriving in Bali and other parts of Indonesia? Um. Cockfighting, um, illegal cockfighting, still thriving in Bali because it serves a purpose um, for so many things, especially political. So many political, uh, strong political figures are actually cockfighting fans. I mean, for whatever the the, the world you, we we live in, uh, rules is always bent uh, to 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 serve uh, who's in power. For example, the one uh, cockfighting events is one of the one of the most efficient way to rally your voters just like the NRA in America where you know um, where serve a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, conservative uh, to to rally voters and um, that's probably one of the most obvious uh, it you know the Balinese just like everybody else we do have problem in seeing uh, uh, animal torture and all of those things. But again, when it comes to, for some practical political purposes, people will do uh, things that, uh, that will serve the purpose. Thanks so much, Made. We have uh, around 25 minutes now. We've got some excellent questions here. We're going to try and get through all of them. If we fall short, we will transfer the questions into Slack so that we can make sure that uh, all of the questions are answered. Uh, Clarice, I think uh, this question is for you and it's coming from uh, Dr. Raman Chennai, uh, who's asking, do you suggest any changes in government policy in backyard poultry for developing countries? 
especially that would encourage more women to participate. Uh, thank you uh, for, for, for that, that question. I think um, um, it, it's important that, that government uh, policies and strategies are um, aligned to include and to, to consider women and this gender, uh, to have a gender consideration and the gender lens when they are developing um, uh, programs or, uh, or projects. And, and it's important, yes, uh, Backyard Poultry has um, has been uh, deported on some studies, many studies and, 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 and field uh, testimonies on how it has contributed to the empowerment of, of women and, 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 and its importance actually in food security and nutrition for the household. And this is an important consideration and, and therefore it's, it's, it's important that uh, policymakers are including this aspect in, in, in support to, uh, to, to rural women. Um, thank you. Thanks, um, Clarice, that's great. Um, I, I see a, another question that I, I see is uh, directed, I think, to, to, to Made. And Dr. Da um, is asking, can chicken and other poultry rearing be rolled out as a short-term support to the hard-hit tourist, tourism economy? in Bali amidst the COVID-19 pandemic? It certainly could because the skill and the, the skill, the population skills in, uh, to rare poultry and other you know, chickens and other, other poultry is, uh, is actually already there. And as I mentioned, my, my slides over there, you know, the society is already very, very familiar with the, you know, what numbers of the small scale chickens that they have to, or ducks that they have to, to manage uh, uh, properly, you know, uh, but it, but again, uh, I think communities already started taking this initiative by their own. Uh, that uh, uh, raising chicken, um, the local breed, not the not the duck that is coming from the manufactured, uh, are a lot more. Uh, it's one of the uh, one of the remedy remedial economical practices that has been taken uh, so far. And, and I think the government is probably considering that at the moment because the Balinese government also is very, very sort of like a very, very culturally attuned where the local chickens are also part of the offering uh, uh, material. So I think that is a good uh, initiative to start. Now we have a, a top rating question here, according to those who are voting, and it's coming from Alessandra, who's a team leader within of gender within uh, the International Livestock Research Institute, and she's asking to progress towards gender equality faster. Would it be more strategic to support women's control over larger, more lucrative species rather than poultry? You, you may both wish to answer this question. You can decide. I can I can I can go ahead. I, I think uh, that's a, a very uh, interesting uh, question to uh, on on this uh, poultry um, production. Uh, there there are really three reasons, mostly the main reason why uh, women are heavily involved in the poultry production. One is because it's it's a low investment, especially if we are talking about backyard poultry, it's a low investment, low input, and especially for their time, as women have to share time between their reproductive activities, uh, taking care of the community, of the household, the family, um, and other activities. And so, and another second uh, is that women are doing it at homestead. Uh, they don't have to go distances, and so, um, and another uh, another reason could be that women in some in some context in some region they, they they have to they cannot perhaps do some activities without being accompanied by men and so if we introduce larger livestock um, and and so how do we ensure that in some context women will still have not only access to but they have control over resources that's something that we need to, to, to accompany um, in, in some of the you know, rural and remote areas, accompany these um, 
uh, in, in accompany the, the policies to make sure that there is also empowerment that is going along. It has been demonstrated that mostly women uh, do sell some of the chicken to buy some small remnant or some pig uh, when they want to transform. And so I think it's, it's making sure that um, we don't build a competition inside the household, but we accompany women, especially uh, when we use some of the mechanism or the approach, uh, such as pharma field school, where you make sure that women are empowered um, in terms of decision making. And so by having them access to credit, to input and to markets, you're making sure that even if they will raise a uh, larger livestock, they will not be taken advantage of by middlemen because then at the end, you will lose even the small input that we're having on poultry. But it's really an interesting um, consideration to look at it and to see what are the supporting mechanisms that will accompany such policy. Thank you. Thank you, Clarissa. Made, did you want to add something to that? In, um, uh, in, in my country or in Bali or Indonesia in general, when it comes to terms of a uh, small scale, I think uh, men and women are basically have a similar similar opportunity to uh, to raise any kinds of uh, uh, to 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 do any kinds of animal husbandry, for example, you know, like uh, chicken is just one of it. And then there is already a divisions of investments among a family or a society in Bali that chickens is considered to be a short term investment and pig, you know, like for the the culture that raised pigs is a middle-term investment, and um, and and cow or cows or cattle um, are are as a long-term investment. And usually, all men and women in a family got, got involved in this. And uh, for furthermore, in the more sophisticated in terms of income management coming out of this investment in in Javanese society, it's women who manage the 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 the, the money that is coming coming from the, um, uh, the sales of any of these uh, uh, animals. And they will decide what, uh, what, uh, how much that they will reinvest on this low, uh, you know, like uh, short term, middle term and, uh, and, uh, and long term. Of course, there are some, some, some g uh, gender uh, glitch here and there, but when it comes to a, a proper a management of a, of, a, of a small scale farming that in, include animal husbandry. There is already skill that, that, that any kinds of government scheme could just plug in straight, straight in with a little bit of a tweak here and there in terms of uh, for efficiencies, maybe, you know, like additional veterinary services and all of this thing, and a little bit more of a technology on, uh, on uh, on uh, on the fattening system, a uh, fattening uh, phase of the of the cow before you sell. Thanks, Made, and that that links very nicely with a comment that's coming in from Vietnam. I, I I'm thinking it's from Vietnam. Um, Dr. T Dien is saying gender is always the negotiation in a certain context. How do you think if both men and women satisfy with the current gender relations in poultry production, for example, in Vietnam? As you mentioned, um, and I think this would be Clarice mentioned, men are interested in ducks while women are interested in chicken. This might come from the nature of duck raising need, which needs to move from place to place along canals. Um, and that this uh, need to, the, the movement of ducks towards their, their market may not be uh, possible for women. Um, uh, Made, Clarice, did, did either of you want to comment on that one? Yeah, uh, I think uh, it's uh, um, it, it's uh, an, an interesting point because, uh, of course, depending on the different gender context, um, uh, which varies according to region and countries, uh, there are uh, sort of preferences um, on the breed, on the, the species, um, uh, in terms of po in poultry production, because. Um, if some breeds are easy to manage and if you are able to have easy uh, disposable income easily because you can sell easily um, and, and as you, we know sometimes you, women have access to poultry they are raising backyard poultry to be able to satisfy the guests and festivity or some other uh, culture and ritual activities and so 
yes, of course, uh, there will be differences. And, and I think it's not a bad thing that there are differences and, um, uh, and preferences uh, when it comes to choice. Um, uh, I think um, we see more of uh, uh, when would that be an issue is um, if um, then um, it's sort of exclusive and uh, uh, when it is highly linked to high income and high cash income and 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 that is where you you look at those gender issues and try to understand what are the limitation uh, from before, between men and women and but when it comes to choice and a deliberate choice I think that is not, not no problem about about that thank you Thanks, Clarice. Um, I, I'm not sure if you wanted to answer that one, Made, but I'm going to ask you another question. Um, okay. where time is marching on and I, I'd like to be able to get to as many of these questions as possible. So I think this one um, looks good for you, Made, and it's from uh, Dr. Sayaka uh, asking, when poultry is so entangled with symbolic and cultural meaning, is there room for animal welfare considerations? <laughs> This is a very, um, very delicate matter. Uh, what is the animal consideration? So which lens are we, uh, are we using? Um, say it like uh, the lens of a uh, uh, well, uh, well-managed slaughterhouse, a cow fed with, uh, with soybeans from uh, deforestations of the Amazon. Is that um, the animal welfare that we're looking at? Or chicken that is raised on scrap, uh, um, uh, in a backyard and um, with a very low carbon footprint and, uh, and, and probably not uh, humanly slaughtered, but being wished well uh, with all kinds of offering that uh, look, uh, you have such a meaningful contribution to us and with all of the spiritual um, um, uh, 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 wishes and, and, and all of those things. I mean, I, 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 there is a uh, there is a lot other type of brush that we can paint on seeing um, uh, how animals is being raised and I think uh, uh, for the future I think the the small scale animal husbandry um, it's actually in line with the new uh, movement about you know mitigating uh, greenhouse gas emissions and all of those things yeah. and uh, I think that is where we have to aim for and then that's what uh, the Balinese, in especially, we've been always talking about. You know, this is making let's make such a you know with the way that the, the, the domestic uh, rating it's it's about low impacts on uh, on just on, on on the environment as well as providing, uh, say, it like agricultural um, uh, support for pest control with ducks, for example, in Vietnam. It's almost like the same way that we uh, we carrying it in in our culture. Thanks very much, Made. Uh, time is short. I'm going to ask you, uh, I'm going to have the next question to Clarice, I think, asking for a two minute response maximum. And I'm going to ask you to try and combine answers to two questions into one. Um, Michael Francis, uh, Mike Francis is asking, is it correct that women are generally more involved in the health and well being of their flocks? If so, then this is something to be encouraged as good husbandry is essential for successful poultry production. And uh, Rosa Costa has, has asked, how can we promote and improve the smallholder production subsector in a sustainable way without underestimating the roles and contributions of women? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Michael, uh, for, for, for this uh, uh, good question. Um, yes, it's true, uh, most, mostly women. Uh, and again, uh, men and women, uh, they, they are different variation when it comes to, to context, when it comes to extensive system versus intensive system, where we tend to see more men. Uh, however, in backyard or village poultry, we see more women who are involved in, in day to day care and management of the flocks. Um, and so uh, some programs have um, uh, tried to, to support by, for example, training some women to become vaccinators of Newcastle disease. And so um, in, in, in that way, uh, women are, you know, are accessing other women and um, bringing awareness to, uh, to, to, to disease control, to biosecurity. And, and so 
uh, approaches in training in uh, animal advisory services or other um, services to improve uh, the animal husbandry is really encourage that um, women we, we improve we 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 educate more women because they are they they happen to 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 be uh, involved. Uh, the other question was, uh, I think, how we can can we promote uh, Rose's question? How we can promote and improve the smallholder production subsector in a sustainable way? Um, that that's that's very important because um, we we want to improve the productivity of the the the, the smallholder uh, poultry production. Uh, to make sure that the the, the, port, the, the the sector become is efficient is um, uh, is efficient and not necessarily contributing uh, negatively to to the environment and and in these areas uh, we we need to look at the animal health programs and and the feeding um, and management of the feeding for uh, for the poultry. However, we need also to understand uh, that. Uh, women and men participating in these activities, they have also other, other gender roles um, uh, to, to fulfill. And so uh, we need to make sure that um, the training that are, are given, um, the technologies that are out there and uh, access to market, access to credit, and all the other uh, innovative ways and solution that we are bringing um, on the table that they are reaching um, women in rural village, in rural areas, and also that we are making sure that there is equal um, access to, to this technology and knowledge for women and, and men to be able to produce better and sustainably. Thank Thanks you. so much, Clarice. We, we've had some excellent questions, including the one from um, on Ben David, looking at, uh, asking about high income countries and industrial production. We're not going to have time to get there during this discussion session. I would ask you to please continue this discussion on Slack. Um, these issues should relate across all categories of low, middle and high income countries. And we'd love to be able to capture that in our, in our discussion. Fortunately, we're out of time. I'm going to ask our te tech team to put up our key take home messages from this session. And uh, they include um, really important points that uh, Clarice mentioned, uh, that extensive poultry production are more accessible to rural women, the importance of providing women with access to assets, credit programs, access to market training and support, and support for training for safe animal husbandry, marketing and nutrition education. Made highlighted that poultry rearing in Bali is almost gender neutral and that poultry rearing activities are embedded in traditional culture. He also stressed the public health ramifications of, pul of the, their poultry rearing culture. Now for you, our audience, here's our second poll where, we'd, uh, where you can let us know if you think that using a gender lens can help us to better tailor our support to poultry producers. So while you fill in that uh, poll, I'd, I'd like to thank again our panelists, uh, Clarice Ingabire and Made Satiawan, to our tech team for working in the background to make everything run smoothly, and to you, our audience, for your interest and your questions. Do please continue these discussions either now or during the com com coming weeks on our online Slack channel using the link that you received at registration or you can access it via our hub website today, tomorrow, or whenever you have time. Uh, as we are moving on with our next event in this series, it will be on the 3rd of February at the same time. Do please join us when Mike Francis from the International Veterinary Vaccinology Network and Rebecca Doyle from the International Livestock Research Institute will explore why millions of birds continue to die from vaccine preventable diseases, what it means for animal and human welfare, and to discuss options for future improvement. If I could now ask the TEP team to put up the results of the second poll. Uh -huh. So people are a little clearer uh, now about the that uh, using a gender lens 
was going to be helpful in the way we tailor our support for um, our support to poultry producers. So that's that's an interesting change. And I see that we do, I think I might have brought this to an end a little quickly. We still have time. Sorry about that. So if I can, can I go back and ask the question from uh, Ben David, which is considering how gender relationship in big the big poultry industry in countries like Australia, in the UK, in the US, uh, where and where the welfare of animals and humans is much more on the agenda. So would either of you like to unpack that gender relationship? Do you mean gender relationship in a big, um, big industrial uh, uh, poultry yes. hearing? Um, yes. In, in a country in the US and <laughs> Uh, in Australia, I probably will pass on that. Clarice, did you want to comment on that one? If not, it's a it's a discussion we can take um, to to the Slack channel where we can involve uh, a greater range of of respondents. What would you like? Yeah, I think we can take it to the Slack for discussion. Okay, so now that we have time, I want to ask Made this question, which was sitting there, and I know that a lot of people will be interested. And it is, how is cockfighting related to the transmission of STDs and HIV? <laughs> it's um, it's a very uh, very clear actually. Um, men's and uh, men's with their uh, with their roosters or cocks out there, uh, and they um, combine with the winning victories and they. They like to splurge their um, their um, their winning monies to all kinds of uh, entertainment, and plus cockfighting is always cockfighting events is always mobile from one place to another place, and it's always been uh, this is where the gender disparities is uh, uh, is exist and and still persist at the moment, where men are more mobile with an excuse oh I'm going to go to cockfighting because. I like it, or uh, you know, because they like it, and um, and beside cockfighting, they will also do all kinds of uh, entertainments on the side, and and there's always been uh, the cockfighting events is also as a magnet for um, uh, commercial sex sexual uh, transactions, and it's been like that uh, traditionally, and men's are also has kind of a pre um, meditation that. Part of their journey to do cockfighting is also fighting their cock somewhere else, you know. <laughs> and um, so that's how. Um, and the condom use is very low. And then a couple with the um, couple with the with the substance abuse, at, uh, which is needle use. Um, when I was doing my study in two thousand and three, that's almost like a, a perfect storm for uh, for uh, for this bad i would call it i okay i call it bad culture where animal fighting is involved whether it's a goat uh, you know male goat fighting or whether it's a rooster fighting or bull fighting it's always uh, come with the um, with the parts of the entertainment where men could satisfy their um, their machisms or something like that um thanks Day. Yeah. That was a, 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 a very good answer to an extremely good question. Uh, Clarice, could I ask you to respond to this question from Jane Toom, where she says, how do we convince others that poultry is, is surely a good income generating activity, especially for women, without demeaning it as a lesser business as compared to other things such as dairy? So she's saying, why, why are we promoting poultry? Uh, thanks for for the question. Um, I, I think um, in order to make uh, to ensure that it's a good business, which actually is happening, if you take a country like Burkina Faso, um, if you go anywhere, you will go uh, chicken. Uh, uh, it's a good business, um, and actually, if you are giving um, small credit to, to to women or or to men, they will invest in in poultry because it's good business because the price of um, uh, poultry raised in the backyard system um, has um, 
is much higher than the one um, raised in intensive system because of the consumer preferences. And so I think it's all about um, the awareness uh, campaign that, um, that, I'll, that can be an education to the consumers, but, how, but it's also about making this system more sustainable and, 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 and resilient to shock to diseases and um, having access to good access to market, building the good infrastructure, because if uh, rural uh, poultry products are, are in remote areas, uh, they cannot have access to, to a good price. And, and therefore, it's not going to be as, um, as um, trending, let's say, as dairy pro um, production. For example, as we know, um, policymakers, um, they decide um, in, in, in within the policies and, and decide maybe to invest in the, in the dairy production, putting industries, uh, uh, processing industries, and that raise uh, the price uh, at farm gate. And so I think government will have to invest in, in making sure that we have industry that are processing, that their negotiation in some countries like Bangladesh, their contract farming that makes sure that it becomes a good business for smallholder farmers going into cooperative and having a good voice because they can um, have a good negotiation skills. And, um, and I think this is how we can, we can raise um, this as a business. And perhaps uh, Robin, before, uh, before I, I finish, I, I think, I, think I, I would like to come back to this uh, question from David. I think I had not really well understood. I think uh, in, in these countries, although I, I, I don't think that I have a good knowledge of what is happening in Australia, but Mostly we tend to see big companies uh, in intensive um, poultry production. And so these big companies, they have their own management and, uh, and financial, uh, financial management that make sure that, uh, uh, that, that the, the returns, the economic returns are probably shared within the companies um, or the families if it's, it's large farm because these intensive farming are more specialized. And so uh, looking at the let's say that the country's advancement in terms of gender equality, uh, perhaps you will, uh, um, you, they, there may be assumption that women will have a, a share in those, in those companies because again, if it's a company it has all the rules that it's following. And, and it, again, animal welfare, it's very important in this country. It, it's a, an important topic and, and because if these countries have to export, then they have to, to follow some rules and regulations in terms of um, making sure that they are following the, the rules because we have OIE, um, uh, the International Animal Health Organization that is sending uh, regulations um, and guidelines on, on animal welfare and some of the companies in order to be able to 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 access the, this market they have to comply to this to this regulation it's it's a it's a work in progress i have to say and and it's a, it's a call for for all of us to make sure that we are respecting animal welfare that we are reducing the pollution the environmental the carbon footprints from these uh, larger and bigger companies and that we are also uh, making sure that they they become efficient and and, and sustainable thank you Thanks so much, Clarice. Made, did you want to make any final comments before we wrap up? Um, I, I should say that um, that the, um, the the facilities of this um, uh, small scale um, um, uh, poultry rearing and um, with it's 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 worth of a, of of investment because. As I said it before, the skill and the you know the limitation, the community already have the skill and also the limitations of of how many how many chicken or ducks that they can rear uh, 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 you know in small scale, because if it is too too many of them, and then they probably will make a loss because they cannot feed them with the basically the the majority of the feedings is from scrap, and and also the 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 limitations of the the. the the, the rearing area, you know, like if you venture too far, maybe the snake will eat it, or the dog will eat it, or the, the, the neighbors will eat it. So they, they already know all of these uh, limitations because, uh, and, and the, uh, a small scale for, uh, uh, poultry rearing, it, it's, it's, very important be, uh, it's very important to be seen as part of the, 
just one aspect of uh, a social life that the, 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 the people have, the Balinese has, you know, like we're farmers, we farm first, you know, we grow rice first, and then the chickens is the additional income that is actually very, very, uh, you know, like it has a big promise on it. You know, it's very profitable. And uh, because when you go to, you know, to a restaurant, uh, the local restaurant, they will go, the market is already there, you know, they will prefer to have, as Clarissa said, they will prefer to have the local chicken meat than the, 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 the industrially raised uh, meat. The taste is different uh, locally. Thanks, Made. I, could, I couldn't agree more on the difference in the taste. If I can ask Dan to put up the, the slide for our next our next panel. Thanks again to our panelists. It's been a fabulous discussion. Please continue it uh, via the Slack channel. A and uh, we hope that we you will be able to join us for our next panel on the 3rd of February. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time, for your input and your interest. Please stay safe. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.